this is Dusty Jones and we're here to talk about fractions in the Babylonian numeration system. The Babylonians used a, a sexagesimal system, base 60, and just like our modern day decimal system, this sexagesimal system extended to parts of numbers that were less than one. And so in addition to having whole number place values of ones, sixties, uh, 60 squared or 36 hundreds. Uh, we also had parts less than one, uh, 60ths, uh, 36 hundredths. Uh, the next place value would be 1 over 60 to the third power. Ancient Babylonians uh, did not have a symbol to separate the whole number part of a numeral from the fractional part of a numeral. The term for this is a separatrix. So if they have a symbol for 1 and 10, that could be 160 and 10 ones, so 70. Or it could be that the 1 meant 1's place and the 10 was in the 60th place, so 1 and 10 60ths. Or it could be that the 1 was in the 60th place and the 10 was in the 36 hundredths place. In the United States, we use a decimal point as a separatrix uh, to separate the whole number part from the fractional part. And so in this course, I'll use a semicolon as a separatrix for these sexagesimals. And so to indicate that we've got 1, 1, and 10 sixtieths, I'll put 1 semicolon 10. And to indicate we've got 1 sixtieth and 10 36 hundredths, I'll have 0, then a semicolon, a 1 comma 10. Just like we can have terminating and repeating decimals, we can have terminating and repeating sexagesimals. If a sexagesimal representation of a number eventually stops, uh, we'll say it's terminating. And so here I've got some terminating sexagesimals that I'd like you to uh, write as mixed numerals in lowest terms and also as, uh, as decimals. And I can go ahead and pause this and, and try this activity now. Just to pick a couple of examples from this page, uh, the first one, 1, 2, semicolon 3. This means uh, we've got 1 in the 60s place, 2 in the 1s place, and 3 in the 60th place. And the whole number part of this will be, looks like 62 and 3 sixtieths, which as a lowest terms mixed num number, we've got 62 and 1 twentieth. And as a decimal, uh, 62.05. Uh, with 10 semicolon 20 comma 40, that 10's in the ones place, and the 20 is in the 60th place, and the 40 is in the 36 hundredths place. So I know my answer is 10 and something. We could go ahead and reduce these fractions 20 sixtieths and 40 36 hundredths now if we want. Uh, that would give us 10 plus a third plus, let's see, 4 over 360 would be 1 90th. And the common denominator between thirds and 90th is 90th. And so this becomes, instead of 1 third, We've got 30 90ths, so I get 10 and 31 90ths as my fraction, or my mixed number answer. And as a decimal, I'll just trust that you can get that decimal form on your own. Now I'd like to um, take these uh, base 10 numerals, these Hindu Arabic numerals, and have you write them in this sexagesimal notation. 
and you can go ahead and pause it here and, and try these. Here I'll work out a few of these examples. The thing to remember when writing numbers as sexagesimals is that we want uh, to come up with denominators of powers of 60. The 3 is in, the, in 3 and a half is in the 1's place and we want to write 1 half as some 60th. Uh, so 1 half is the same as 30 60th. So it's a sexagesimal. We've got 3 semicolon 30. With the fraction 2 fifths, there's no whole number part, and we just need to change that fifths into sixtieths. I happen to know if you multiply 5 by 12, you get 60. And so therefore, if we get an equivalent fraction, we can take 2 times the 12 and get 24 sixtieths. So as a sexagesimal, we have 0 as a whole number part and 24 sixtieths. This 0 0.1 as a fraction is 1 tenth. And in terms of sexagesimals or sixtieths, that's the same as 6 sixtieths. So we would write this as 0 semicolon 6. With this 0 0.1 repeating, uh, or 1 ninth, there's a problem in that if I look at this in terms of 60th, 9 doesn't go into 60 a uh, whole number of times. That is to say, 9 times 6 is 54, not 60. 9 times 7 is 63, also not 60. So uh, it's 6 and something uh, that's a little bit more in there. So what we will do instead is we can look at the next place value, 36 hundredths. And it works out that 9 times 400 is 3600. So to get an equivalent fraction, we'll take 1 times 400. And 436 hundredths is the same as 1 ninth. Now the issue becomes something different. I can't just write 0 semicolon 0 in the 60th place and 400 because that 400 is too large. Remember in sexagesimals we can only get up to 59 in a particular place value. So this won't work. To get around this we take a look at what the 400 is as a sexagesimal. 400 is 6 sixties, that would be 360, plus 40 to bring us up to 400. So since 400 is 6 times 60 plus 40, 400 over 3600 is the same as 6 times 60 over 3600 plus 40 over 3600. In this first fraction, we can cancel or divide out a 60 from the numerator, and that leaves us with 60 in the denominator. So now we get that 1 ninth or 400 over 3600 is equal to 6 sixtieths plus 40 36 hundredths or as a sexagesimal 0 for the whole number part semicolon 6 in the sixtieths place and 40 in the 3,600's place. We could also have some non-terminating sexagesimals. Uh, the ones we'll look at here are repeating non-terminating. And so here uh, in this first group I have some repeating sexagesimals. And then I've got some fractions that I'd like for you to try to write in sexagesimal notation. You can go ahead and pause the video here and try that on your own. Here I'll take this repeating sexagesimal and write it as a set of fractions here, a series, 1 60th plus 1 in the 60 squareds place, 
plus one in the uh, 60 to the third place, I guess. Uh, plus one over 60 to the fourth power. And this goes on forever. This is an infinite series. It's also infinite geometric series. The first term, or what we typically call the A term, is 1 60th. And the common ratio that we're multiplying each term to get the next term is also 1 over 60. Uh, the numerators are multiplied by 1. The denominators are multiplied by 60. Because this ratio is between positive 1 and negative 1, we know the sum of this series uh, is going to be a over 1 minus r, which is, with our numbers, 1 60th over 1 minus 1 60th, which turns out to be 1 60th over 59 60ths, which, when all is said and done, becomes 1 59th. So that's the same as this repeating sexagesimal with all ones. For the fraction 1 7th, uh, what this really means is 1 divided by 7. And as a sexagesimal, uh, I, I think how many times does 7 go into 1? It doesn't go in at all. So I put a 0 up here. And now I'll put a sexagesimal separatrix, the semicolon. And I'll add a 0 down here. And now that looks like 10, but it's not 10 because remember we're in a sexagesimal system. So this really here means uh, 60, 1 semicolon 0. So I'm really thinking 60s. Uh, how many times does 7 go into 60? We've got 8 times. Uh, 7 times 8 is 56. And so I've got 4. Uh, I put another 0 on here, do another place. So 4 comma 0, again, that's not 40. It's 4 60s. So really, we're now thinking 240. How many times does 7 going to 240, well, I happen to know it's 34. And 7 times 34 is 238, which leaves me with 2. And I'll put another place on here, so 2 comma 0. That's really 120. And how many times does 7 go into 120? Well, it goes in 17 times. And so 7 times 17 is 119, which leaves me with 1. And now I've got this 1 comma 0, which is like I started out with. And so it turns out that this is going to be a repeating sexagesimal uh, 8, 34, 17, 8, 34, 17. And here are some answers uh, to part 1 and part 2. And part 3.